So we're waiting on Mark, Gabriella, and Shilonine. I'm here. Kathy. I'm here. I'm speeding. Yeah. Ah, okay. Sherry, I'm here. All right, just making sure. All right. So we are ready to begin then. So I'm seven oh one seven o'clock, and I'm opening uh, open session of the Azusa Unified School District Board of Education. Uh, we'll start with a flag salute. So, pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Oh, look at the flag. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. It, okay. And okay. next, we are now moving over to, I'm going to pull the agenda up here, the agenda. Um, next, we will go to roll call. Um, board member Cruz Gonzalez. Here, I'm here. Okay, uh, board member uh, Rodriguez Pena. Present. Board member a Adrian Greer. Here. And board member Arianis. Here. Okay, um, now item C, 4.1, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? I move that we approve uh, okay. item 4.1. Okay, moved by uh, board member Greer and seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Now it's time for all of us to vote. I honestly don't know how to do that. Um, Arturo didn't show me, or what do I do? Okay, uh, actually, you're logged into the um, Oh, what is it called? Our online voting? The IC board? Where we normally log into with our, our computers at the, at the district? Yolanda I, sent, Yolanda, I just sent you uh... A, a bunch of numbers and dots. Plug that in. You put it in where you would put like the, the website name and a web and a, and a blank website, and then hit enter, and then you can log in. Thank you, Shilini. Did you get the email I sent you? Y yes. One six five. Okay, so one six five. Okay, so it's up here, um, and I'm clicking on it, but it's not doing anything. You have to put it where you would put like google.com and hit enter and then it should take you to a website. No, it's not taking me to any website. Should we just do hand votes? Or what is everybody's opinion on this since I'm no expert in this? I think we should do a hand vote uh, to move forward, and uh, and then she she can go ahead and try throughout the um, you know meeting. What do you guys think? I'm good for that. Adrian, that sounds that sounds good. Yeah, that's fine. All righty. Um, so all in favor, say yes. Aye. 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 Okay, so it is five zero, but yeah, passes five zero. And then we will move on next to the items from the floor public comment on agenda, not agenda items, item 5.1. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board on non agenda items. 
No action can be taken on non-agenda items. Individual speakers may be allowed up to three minutes to address the board on any non-agenda item. Prior to addressing the board, please fill out the request to speak public comment blue card and submit it to the board secretary. But do we have any? So for this one, if we can have anyone who would like to make a public comment, um, click the raise your hand button. Oh, it doesn't look like we have any hands raised. Give them a second just to make sure oh, okay. they can find it. Yes. It's on the, it is on the bottom. And just uh, while we're waiting, our student board member is present and live. Okay, so thank you for reminding me that I even wrote myself a note to call on our student board member. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Um, Yvonne, text me. Let me see if she wants to talk. All right. Yvonne Maria, did you want to say something? Okay. No, she does not. Okay. Well, then at this point, we'll move to 6.1 comments and requests by the board. Uh, 6.1 comments and re requests by the board. So uh, board member Rodriguez Pena. Yes, um, yeah, good evening everyone. Um, I just wanna mention that the, the virtual spirit week was a lot of fun. Um, I kind of woke up every day wondering was I supposed to wear silly clothes or my crazy socks? So I heard that the kids had a great time with that. So, and I also like the storytelling. They have this, this storytelling every day. You hear like mm -hmm. the story from a different administrator or, or um, and it was, that's really good because a lot of the stories are really cute. Um, but I also like to thank the essential, work, the essential workers for continue working on the lunch uh, grab and go. And also, um, They've been working out there, rain or shine. You know, it rained last week or so, and, and they were out there working. Yeah, and also um, all the employees that uh, worked on getting the Chromebooks out, making Chromebooks the, out. getting them ready to give out, and um, also the. Um, I want to thank Dr. Kaminsky and the uh, the leadership, cabinet, teachers, classified employees, and the parents for all their hard work for continuing to serve our students at AUSD. I also wanted to thank Mayor Gonzalez for initiating a one day um, diaper. They brought diapers, uh, diaper giveaway and toys giveaway at one of the at lunches at Azusa High from um, Liz, Options for Learning. They're an organization that help, takes care of children, but because they don't have children there, they had an overload of pampers. I, think, I guess they were pampers. And uh, this person called um, Mayor Gonzalez, and then he called me, and then I called the district office. And anyway, they made that happen. They they said that it was a really good turnout. They had a lot of diapers, and you know, it's hard for people to purchase diapers right now. So I just I just want to thank thank him for that. That's it. Thank you. Okay, uh, Board Member Cruz Gonzalez. Um. So I'll just I want to thank Yolanda and say that I really need, I just want to express my appreciation to all of our employees that are working so hard, that are making sure that our students are getting food, um, even during spring break when many just were bought one didn't do that. Um, through the, 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 the classified employees who are helping prepare 
resources for students on an ongoing basis. All of our certificate of teachers for the yeoman's job, I know they're doing switching overnight from a system that we've known so well for so long to now trying trying to do this distance learning on the fly. So I really want to appreciate them and, and of course all of the administrators that are helping to put this all together. So I just want to express my appreciation for everyone. I think um, words really can't make up um, what the work that you're doing means to our community. And so I, I, I did want to say that. Um, I also want to say um, I really appreciate the communication that's coming out from our district. Um, so for work, I have the ability to, part of my work is to see what some other districts are doing. And I just want to say that I really appreciate the thoughtfulness of our district, the work that our district is doing in terms of making sure that we're not only reaching our students, but trying to support them and, and serve their needs as well as those of their families. So um, I think that's all I will say tonight. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, board member Greer. Yeah, hello everybody. Just a few things and, and first and foremost, Similarly, just want to say thank you to everybody um, and, and all the hard work that, that that's going on. Um, so we have things that, that can be clearly seen, like um, the essential work of making sure that our families, you know, and, and our students are getting the, that food. And, and, and then on top of that, um, the, the distance learning and those practices that are happening. I know that, you know, seeing my daughter in her class has been a has been a joy and seeing how she's enjoying that and loving that and, um, you know, her sharing it and, and you know, she... I think she she made this where if you can see it, it's kind of it says raising hand so as, as she's sitting here so she's even you know being creative and in, in, in how to kind of engage and interact and so it's fun it's 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 fun to see that um again nobody we couldn't plan for this we you know we there's no way that we could have known that something like this was uh, was mm -hmm. was going to happen um and so I want to say grateful to to all, all the hard work that's going on and especially to the to the hard work that's going on that is that's vital but that maybe isn't seen or recognized as easily but there's so much behind the scenes stuff that that that's going on um and so to those folks who are who are putting in that time and, and, and maybe not getting that recognition um we wouldn't be able to, to to do what we're doing in our community without you. I'm hearing so many things where, where people are talking about this district um, and comparing it to their own context and their own districts and how they're doing things. And um, every time that happens, I, I'm, I'm seeing that as uh, Azusa is coming out on on top um, by the way that we're doing things. And so just a, a huge uh, thank you to, to everybody. Um, one other thing, just to kind of keep this in mind, uh, when, when things first kind of kicked off, it was very much, you know, what are we going to do in the here and in the right now? And there's, there's things that we have to do to address, you know, immediately. And then in the short term, I know we have some different phases, um, even with some of the rollout of, of how we've done things. Um, I'd like to kind of keep it on us to, to remember um, some of the, you know, some, some of the other things that maybe aren't at, uh, have, have not been as urgent as they had seemed in the past. And so one of those things is, you know, we talked about the need to plan around, um, you know, a five plus year plan and a deadline that's, you know, that we that we set a target for, for September. Um, you know, again, we didn't foresee this, you know, losing this last month, but um, I, I'd like to, to, to make sure that, that that stays in front of us um, and in hopes of still continuing to honor that, um, that deadline. And so, however, we need to shift and if, you know, we need to add some conversations here, considering how, how we can do it and still get in from the community, because that was a huge point um, in, in allowing us to have some time. Um, so all that to say, I, I'd, I'd like to keep that in front of us and, and um, make sure that, you know, we don't come around to, to July, August, September, and realize that time has gotten away from us. That's still on the, on the docket. Um, that's all I have. Okay, and board member Ariana, Arianas. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, our our employees, all of the district administration, everybody who has come together and who is coming to work and doing work that is not essentially theirs. And it has stepped out of the boundaries and been, you know, taken action and is helping, you know, principal do X, Y, and Z, even though that it's not their job to do that. And so I appreciate the employees that are taking the step, going beyond what is expected, and when they can be home with their um, with their families. So I truly am grateful for all of you and for our nutrition services 
And like Adrian said, the people that are, I don't know if it was Shanelle, uh behind um, the scenes that we, we, we don't see and that are making this happen to the cabinet who, you know, thank you for, for your extra time that you've been putting in. Uh, you're working remotely, but yes, you are busy and uh, we appreciate that. And one of the things, like Adrian said, uh, it, has, it has been a month and things, you know, now it's been extended to May 15th. We, and now we have been, uh, the closing of the schools has extended to the end of the year. And so one of the things that I would really like to um, uh, start a conversation, not tonight, but just a conversation about our seniors. And, you know, what does that look like? You know, we're postponing the, the graduation. Um, you know, can we reschedule it? Um, just just different different um, conversations that we can have. I mean, um, being able to, to, to say the least that these seniors were cheated out of their last months as seniors in high school. And some of them are taking it really, um, you know, it's detrimental and some of them are just trying to survive. Um, so we can have a conversation, like I said, not tonight, but um, future um, next meeting to, to discuss this, that that would be, that'd be great. And one more thing, I, I wanted to thank all the families that have uh, helped with the Chromebook uh, distribution as well, the employees too uh, that have helped, but the families that have reached out for other families that have no idea how to get a hold of those Chromebooks or have no idea how to email and stuff. And so to those parents that have helped other parents, thank you. Thank you so much for being an advocate in your school community and making sure that all school students have Chromebooks. So um, that's all I have to say for tonight. And that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> and I just want to piggyback on everybody's comments that all of the extraordinary work that has gone into things. I have had nothing but compliments on our communication and just people have been just been calling me or uh, texting me about it. They just really appreciate the outreach and all of the hard work that all of you are doing from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, because we couldn't do any of it without any of them. I mean, with any link in that chain missing. So I just want to overall tell everybody thank you to the parents and to the students who are having to deal with this. And yeah, my dogs are barking. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this. And um, yeah, we'll move on. Uh, now comments and reports by student board members, cabinet and superintendent. Item 7.0. And let's start with our student board member. Okay, hi. I just wanted to say that last week, Ms. Wong had a meeting with us, with us seniors. And I just really appreciated it because it really helped us feel like our opinions mattered because it was about our senior activities. And it felt like, felt like they really did care about what we had to say and how we feel about everything happening. And I think that's it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, board president, board members, cabinet, public. Um, we, um, I, I miss being um, with you all in, in the general board meeting just to see everyone. And um, this is a, is, a, is a beautiful community, and you see the um, the real strength and the, the commitment of a community when you have um, situations that are like um, none other. And this really is one of those situations. I think someone said it earlier uh, prior to us coming online that never in our lifetime did we ever expect um, that we'd be living through something like this. Um, but the the resilience of the community, the, the staff coming together, the students. Um, I saw a video recently that brought me to tears um, just, just some real, real, um, oh, fantastic, um, beautiful um, uh, moments, and I, and I'm very grateful to be a part of of this of this school district. 
Um, so I, I, I think I have another point where we'll talk about COVID-19, um, um, some of the pieces, so I'll reserve for the rest of my comments about that. And uh, Mark Bamarito. Yeah, I, I want to kind of echo what our board members have stated, which is just a true appreciation for uh, all those employees that are out there making sure that things continue to happen. And um, I've been working closely with our, our nutrition services department and our maintenance operation transportation department um, and seeing firsthand all the amazing work that they've accomplished um, under these circumstances and trying to reinvent how we do um, education in, during this time. Um, and they've done an amazing job of being able to figure out how to get our kids fed, how to have our campuses uh, available for Chromebook pickup, um, the staff that Arturo and his team put together to make sure that our, our families had a way to get a hold of a, uh, a live body to, so that way they could have a conversation about um, getting those Chromebooks out and the amazing job um, that team did in getting Chromebooks in kids' hands right away um, was, was just uh, a, a beautiful thing. So it just shows the, the, the great things that Azusa staff has been able to put together. And I know our, our teachers, and I'm sure Arturo will talk about it, have done a great job of um, putting together an online education program in a very short period of time. And Arturo, Ortega. Speaking of short period of time, I was in a meeting today and I realized that we are only on day seven. Uh, it feels like we're on day 70. Uh, so much has, has gone on. And so uh, just appreciative as well uh, of all the staff, uh, classified certificated management uh, that has come around from Chromebooks to medication, uh, to distance learning, to meetings, uh, to phone calls, to sheets, um, to printing. I mean, it's been so, so much. And uh, <clears throat> what I like to point out is just to, to really highlight the leadership uh, that has come out of, of so many folks across the district um, has just been really amazing uh, to see. Um, and that has been that has been awesome. I also want to echo uh, Mr. Greer's comments. Uh, I too uh, have been in a lot of cross district meetings uh, recently. Um, and uh, to see uh, Azusa uh, leading the way in, in, in a lot of different aspects uh, has been has been a testament to the people who uh, live in this community and who work in this community uh, together and lead the community. So just want to be appreciative of that. And I would like to uh, join the chorus of, uh, of really appreciation and thanks for who these people are in Azusa that make this district such a wonderful place. And thank you to our classified staff, to our certificated staff, to the board, to the admin administrators, because it really has been a um, you know, an awe-inspiring example of what people can achieve and how people can overcome challenges. And, you know, they say that the true test of character comes when facing a challenge. And what we see here is that we can rise to these challenges and we can overcome them. And as students, the work that, that they are doing at their homes to, to be connected, to, to stay focused on their education when it's pretty tempting just to watch TV um, is really impressive. And um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to, to witness that, to see that. It, you know, I'm sure none of us would have wanted this to happen, but seeing it shows a side of us that we can all be exceptionally proud of. And so I just really am honored. And, and like a couple of the others, I'm in, in um, meetings with, with uh, superintendents up and down the state and, and do see people asking, how are you guys doing it? What are you doing it? You know, what are you doing? And can, do you mind if we borrow your samples of what you're doing? And we're always happy to share. And it, it's a compliment and a testament to who we are as a district and the wonderful strength of people that we have and the commitment that they have that other people are asking and looking to us as, as and to you, to all of us together as leading the way for so many others. So thank you all very, very much. I appreciate it. And I actually have to give a little bit of kudos to Nutrition Services. Mark 
uh, Bomarito shared the other day that proportionately we are serving more people than LAUSD. So <laughs> good, good, amazing work. Thank you so much. Can okay. I just add one, one thing, please? Oh, certainly. Okay, Jerry. I, don't, I, I just want to say, so I'm not sure who's in charge or who's organizing the, reading the storybooks. I think it would be nice if, if board members were, if, if they want to, to, mm -hmm. to read a book to the children or to whom, well, I even see them, but whomever, if they can include us, I, I would like to do it. I, I, I would join you. Great. That's Lika. I, I agree. All right. Good job, Yolanda. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Lika, right. you've got quite a few volunteers here coming forward. <laughs> oh, I enjoy watching them. And, oh, yeah. yeah, I do too. It's cute. Okay. Um, so with no worries. We'll move on to 8.0, uh, report action of closed session matters. And 8.1, resolution 1920-42, reduction or discontinuance of particular kinds of classified and management services. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? Or do I have a motion? I, I move to approve. All righty, uh, moved by Board Member Greer. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, seconded by Board Member Arianas. And is there any discussion? Yes, I think it's important that um, we we um, discuss um, the process of how uh, individuals are going to get their notices. So Jorge, can you explain the process, please? Yes, uh, and um, I, I've said um, in conversations leading up to this, that this is by far the hardest uh, decision that uh, we make as an organization um, and the board has to make. Um, so uh, the, the resolution does include um, a, a list of uh, positions. Um, the positions are um, occupied by, by people um, and, um, and each one of those people are important and, and we value um, each one of them. We, what we do is once a resolution is passed, um, it goes to the next step uh, in the process, which will involve a, the um, meeting with the negotiations team. Um, the negotiations team has uh, received the seniority list, um, and uh, together we will uh, look at the positions that are on this resolution and um, implement the uh, language that is in the contract that speaks to uh, seniority and bumping rights. Uh, so essentially what we, what we uh, look for are employees that have, um, who are on, whose position is on this list. If they had a previous position in, in the district, then we look at their, senior, their previous position and how many years they were in that position. And that in its totality makes up their seniority in the district. Um, and then from there, we, we ultimately um, to, uh, identify the individuals that will be receiving their notice. And the notice is then the official communication um, that the uh, individual who receives it will be, um, will be, uh, will, will no longer have their position. And so the Ed Code states that we have to serve notice 60 days prior to the um, notice going into effect. So this is not something that will that will happen um, tomorrow. This is not something that happens um, even next week. It's these positions are we we will go through this process with notice, and then they're essentially for next school year where we'll be um, noticing these positions for reduction. And I, I would like to add to I would like to just add. Um, um, and echo what Jorge said in terms of the hardest thing that any of us have to do is, is look at situations and deal with situations that are not, not the making of anybody here in the district, whether it's board or staff or, or anybody, nor is it anything that we ever wanna see happen. And to, to have to um, make, you know, put people in situations that they don't want to be in, that we don't want to have them in. 
and have to deal with that is is heart wrenching. It's just heart wrenching to everybody, certainly to any employee who gets a notice, but also to the rest of us because it really is a family here, and nobody wants to see this happen. And um, I, I just want people to know that it, that we are just hurting all of us for everybody else who's going to get a notice. It is not it is not what anybody wants, and. I, we will try to get through it as best we can. We'll try to support as many people as we can and Jorge will be very conscientious and meet with anybody who has questions. And certainly I'll be happy to meet with them too, um, but to help people through this as best we can because we are, we are in it together. Um. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yeah. Could, yeah. Would it, would it uh, be possible for uh, cabinet? Could could you just help describe the the how and um and, and the why we we're, we're coming to the place where where we're you're recommending the reduction of these um you know positions? What 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 process has has kind of gone through and 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 why? What's what's some of the background behind it? Why don't we start um, with thinking back to um, we know that we know that the government funding is what um, school districts rely on, and we know that that changes sometimes from year to year. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it's going down. Um, and the board asked the district to um, to really get a lot of input, um, particularly from what was called the PAC Plus, to have them look at deep in at detail of the budgets that we are facing, as well as the the staffing that we have, the programs that we have, the services that we have, all the costs, line by line, look at everything, and make recommendations. And then in that process, I'm gonna actually turn that over to Arturo to talk a little bit more about what that process looked like. That is something that started early in fall. So Arturo, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so at the PAC Plus level, um, we looked at uh, the budget, um, through the lens, through three lenses, if you will, uh, we refer to them as buckets. Um, so we looked at um, program as, as one area uh, to possibly uh, look at uh, possible reductions. Um, we looked at uh, staff um, as another possible uh, reduction. And then we looked at uh, school uh, consolidation uh, as another um, bucket uh, in terms of uh, reduction. Um, back in, in those days, um, the number started at uh, $6.5 million. And Mark, feel free to jump in if I do a little mishap here or not. But, um, and as, as we went along and as we, as we looked at that, um, we um, had some staff input, we had parent input, um, and what we, kept, what we kept focusing on was input. Um, and after that process, uh, we shared not only at the board level, uh, but also at school sites as we went around, uh, cabinet did uh, to give um, up updates. Uh, we shared some of the highest um, in terms of um, possible inputs in all three of those buckets, and we we went around and kind of just shared uh, some of those some of those ideas that were coming out of uh, the pack plus. Mark, and again, if I miss something, please feel free to fill in. Yeah, you described it perfectly, um, and that conversation, uh, as Linda described, changed over time as the state budget was worsening um, and that's when we ended up getting up to $8 million as a um, requirement in order for us to um, go positive again. And, and just as a reminder, the district is qualified with its budget right now, which means that um, our reserves will run out unless we do something uh, drastic in the next uh, two years. So 
that is why we've had all this process in place to figure out exactly the best way to um, have a positive budget and meet the, the expectations that we have for our education for our kids, which is a very, very challenging thing to do um, with the short budget that the state has given. Um, so that, that's why we ended up um, as far as a dollar amount and uh, at 8 million, you know, which again was before any of this COVID-19, um, which will have later impacts. Uh, Yolanda, I see that you had your hand raised. Yes, I do. Um, I just wanna say that, you know, I, it's a, this is uh, one of the hardest part of job of a board <clears throat> member um, to make these kind of decisions. You know, as you know, that I myself was a classified employee for 40 years. I worked for a school district, but I, my job also as, as a board member is to keep the district fiscally solvent. So, you know, it's you have to weigh it and you have to make the right decision. So um, just saying, you know, I, 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 it's hard for me and, and I feel really val bad about it. But that I also know, on the other hand, what my other job is, is, is to keep the district fiscally solvent. That's all. Yeah, and you know, and, and oh. piggybacking off that a little bit, Yolanda, this being you know my first year as a as a board member, can I like let me let me confess like the the delicate nature of of some of these decisions where where we're looking at areas areas where there are you know where where there are reductions and and what that means then with positions and and just the complicated complex nature of that. Um, and all the while, I mean, we, we understand that there are not only people that are attached to these positions and roles, but, but uh, Linda, like you said, these are, these are members of our family. And so what, you know, what that looks like and the, and the, the tenderness of that um, and, and still held in tension with the responsibility of ensuring that um, the district is, is you know, fiscally solvent is, is mm -hmm. definitely a, um, a, a, tough, a tough task. Um, and yeah, the, the, the toughest that I think we've had to, I, I, I've, you know, been a part of and, um, and it's and it's not done lightly. I I also want to share that you know th this is a, a a process that has um, taken many turns, has uh, been recommended by administration, you know, superintendent to the board, and I this this is not something that is taken lightly. Um, the like Adrian, you said these are people that you know, uh, this is their livelihood. Um, this is not something that I take lightly. Um, but at the same time, just like Yolanda has expressed, um, we need to think of the fiscal solvency of our district. And, you know, moving forward is really important that keeping in mind that last year, there was two schools that were closed and, and there were no, but there were no layoffs. And I, I myself couldn't believe it. I, I didn't know how we were going to be able to keep both staff from both schools, but somehow it, it, I don't know the district did it, but the reality of, is that when you close a school, there has to be reductions. And unfortunately we'll, we're faced with this now and it's a very uncomfortable position to be in. And I don't take this lightly and this is not personal at all. The, this is something that just to be able to keep our district afloat, there's just, you know, decisions that we have to make to move forward. And I respect all of you. Um, I respect our, our board. I respect administration because I know that they've worked really hard to be able to configure and refigure and configure every time that they would meet with us. And bottom line, this is just not an easy decision. Thank you. Okay, uh, anybody else? Okay, um, I, I would like to say that, I mean, this is just a storm of unfortunate events. You've already had <clears throat> our budget going down and then we got quarantined. People lost their jobs. And now we're moving into layoffs. The, the, uh, the state of California is going into a recession right now. And just having seen the state certification 
of our budget and seeing the the dire warnings that the sort the, the, that were expressed there on how we need to cut back and we need to continue to follow what we're doing. He said we're doing a good job, but we really need to just get down to brass tacks and do it. So for <clears throat> us, I mean, along with the recession coming along, we're going to have less money to operate on. And so that even makes it more important for us to make these really difficult decisions in order to do what's best for our students and for our, our district. And none of it, it, it breaks my heart. It really does. Any other comments? Okay, uh, then we need to vote. Student board members live. Hello. Can Hello. you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, and student board member, how do you vote? Doesn't vote. She doesn't vote. Oh, okay. No. You. I finally remember to ask her to do it on one she doesn't do. Are you doing this uh, remotely or are we raising our hand? I, oh. I, I got it now, Gabby. I, I could do it now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. And it uh, passes 5 0. And then we're going to move on to. The next approved settlement of two cases, 8.2, um, hash AZUS-020132 and hash ASCW-011156. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion by motion. board member Arianas and seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Um, anybody want to discuss? Any discussion? Okay, I guess we'll vote. Carolyn, hold on. Okay, and it passes 5-0. And then we will move on to 9.0, general functions, 9.1, COVID-19 update. Well, thank you. Um, and we asked tonight that we'd have one elementary, one middle and one high school principal talk to you a little bit about what they see happening at their schools, how things are going with the distance learning, how things are going connecting with kids. Um, what they're seeing, because what's most important is, you know, we have all our plans and, and procedures and processes that we try to think through as, as we're getting ready to implement them. But the real question is, how is it working? How is it working with our students, our staff, our families? And so I'm going to invite each of them to come up and speak a little bit about what they're seeing. And then, then I'll ask the um, cabinet members um, to talk a little bit about some of the updates that they want to share with you, too. Okay, so let's start with elementary. Jenny, we have Jenny here. All right, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. We hear you. Okay, I think, let me see if I can start the video. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hello. Um, good evening, President um, Jerry Bibles Vogel, Superintendent Dr. Kaminsky, um, board members, and cabinet. Um, thank you for giving me a chance to share with you tonight about our uh, distance learning program. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to our Ed Services team, um, the entire team, but especially Arturo, Dana, and our incredibly talented TOSAs. Um, the amount of work and thoughtfulness and care that's been put into this plan is just amazing. Um, it has provided all of us, um, administrators and teachers, with a really clear and solid um, foundation um, and framework for moving forward. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. 
Um, but tonight I mostly just wanted to give you, as Linda said, a little glimpse um, into how this plan is um, playing out for our teachers, for our students and for our families. Um, as we all know, this happens so quickly and unexpectedly. Um, honestly, our first um, virtual staff meeting was really emotional. Um, there were tears, um, teachers missing their students, um, being sad about not being able to be present with them, not being able to finish out the year as they planned, missing their colleagues. Um, it's been quite a profound bonding experience for us as a staff to go through this together. Um, but since that first staff meeting, I would say the tone is continuing to evolve and change. Um, we continue to check in on each other and support one another through the ups and downs. But the tone now is really, we can do this. You know, we've got this. Um, the dedication of the teachers has been just phenomenal. Um, they're emailing, texting, calling parents, spending significant amount of, of time and effort to get all of their students connected. Um, one teacher shared with me a late night text that she received from a parent. It said, um, hello, I'm sorry it's so late, but I just wanted to say, all capitals, thank you um, for all you're doing for the students. I can't imagine how stressful it is with all of this online stuff. I now understand the amount of patience teachers have and then the little praying hands emoji. Um, but of course, the best stories are those of our kids. Um, for example, I met today with my TK teacher and she was telling me that she had a show and tell um, session with her four-year-old students yesterday in their Google Hangout. Um, each student um, was asked to bring an item that was special to them and share why it meant a lot to them. She told me one little girl brought a necklace and shared that her grandmother had given it to her. Another little boy held up a soccer ball and said he loved it because he loves playing soccer with his dad. Um, and all of this was going on while the teacher was holding her little puppy, Lucky, on her lap, which, of course, the kids loved. Uh, so you can kind of picture how, um, how that learning is going, even for our littlest students. Um, we have a student at Powell um, who's a newcomer to the United States, um, a beginning English learner. Um, and she and her sister were sent to Mexico to live with family members because um, mom's working and not able to care for them during this time. So my Title I teacher tracked this little girl down all the way in Mexico um, and um, worked together with her older sister uh, to get her digitally connected. So this fourth grade girl is now attending all of her class sessions virtually and meeting with the Title I teacher outside of these sessions for extra English support. Um, and this is happening while she's in Mexico um, and this is going on. So I just thought that was really fantastic. Um, so our teachers are working extremely hard um, their living rooms and kitchens now have whiteboards and number charts and sight words <laughs> posted on the walls. Um, <clears throat> kids are still learning and our parents are appreciative. Um, but most importantly, I think this plan is providing social emotional support and connection um, for our students in the midst of a very difficult time. Um, I've been able to join in on a few of the class hangouts. Um, and I just, I wish you could see the kids' faces. Um, one little boy um, who has autism and a speech impediment um, saw his best friend pop up on the computer screen. <laughs> his eyes lit up and his hand shot up in the air. Um, the teacher asked, you know, what do you wanna say, buddy? Go ahead, you know, what do you wanna say? And he asked if he could say hi to his friend. Um, so the teacher's eyes, you know, welled up with tears and she said, of course, and they unmuted themselves and with the biggest smile that you can imagine. He was just waving, hi, Ethan, hi, Ethan, hi, Ethan. <laughs> um, they both giggled and smiled. And um, it was just really beautiful to see. Um, in another meeting that I was in, a little second grade girl wanted to say something and the teacher told her to go ahead. And she leaned back and hugged her stuffed animal and said, I really, really miss school. Mm -hmm. um, so we all really miss school. Um, we miss school as we knew it, um, but we are forging ahead to create a new kind of school during this time. So I know I'm not alone in saying that my teachers are doing an outstanding job, and I'm really, really proud to work in a district that cares so deeply for our kids. So thank you. I hope that gives you a little picture of what's happening.
Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Okay, Yvette, how about middle school? Hi, can you hear me? Hello. We can't, yeah, we can't hear you. Can very everyone well. hear me? Good evening. It's getting better, a little bit louder. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to share. Uh, can you hear me? Yvette, okay? can you sit maybe closer to the microphone? Uh, no, I just, on the computer I do. Can you hear me? I feel okay. like I'm right on oh, now. Better? Yes, okay. Okay. Um, again, I just simply would like to echo uh, what uh, Jenny said. Shout out to uh, the to Team Tosas and Arturo and Dana for just putting together a magnificent transition to distance learning. Uh, I think that not only uh, Slauson teachers, but teachers from kindergarten all the way to high school are doing a m magnificent job um, communicating and connecting with students. And I, I would like to just share a couple of stories that my teacher shared with me. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that uh, the teachers are doing are reaching out on Wednesdays and there's block schedules and on Wednesday evenings and Friday evenings, uh, they have an opportunity to reach out to students and to parents. And so uh, in doing so, they connect with students uh, sometimes in a Google um, Hangout for in small groups of threes and fours. And they start with the social emotional aspect of how are you doing? How are things at home? And some of the stories that came out of that were just so beautiful. Some of the kids actually shared that they are, um, they, they feel closer to their families. And that uh, one little girl expressed that she's helping her brother ride a bike. And uh, so I think that teachers are actually connecting with students on more of a personal level, finding out what's going home in their family life, uh, giving students the opportunity to share what's going on at home. Uh, a lot of the comments that uh, teachers are receiving is they miss school and that they can't wait to come back. Uh, their students are actually checking in early to Google Hangouts because they want to be there. They want to see their friends. They want to see their teachers. Uh, they're super excited. Uh, some of the other teachers are connecting by doing uh, scavenger hunts uh, prior to starting the lessons. So uh, they have students uh, go find your favorite food and tell us what it is. And, and it's just a quick share out uh, during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, one of the big, big uh, things that I want to shout out to, to all the teachers is that some of the teachers that didn't know how to use technology or were not real comfortable with that, uh, are now using it and super excited about uh, using uh, remind, the Remind app, the Google Classroom, uh, the podcast, and uh, Google Hangouts. And uh, this is something brand new for them. They're super excited. And uh, just really, really, um, everything seems to be going so smoothly. And just nothing but positive things from parents, some of the parents I've spoken to um, have said, thank you. Thank you for the Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the meals. Thank you for, uh, for educating our kids and continuing to care and reach out, uh, whether it's a teacher or our counselors who are sending out nice nightly messages as well. Uh, they're doing such a phenomenal job. And I think uh, yesterday I was on the front lines handing out meals with Adrian. And uh, one of the things that, that we talked about was that it's just such a smooth transition. And again, I'm just very proud to be a uh, part of the Azusa team. I've uh, been here 26 years. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share out all the great things that are happening with distance learning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yvette. I just love hearing the stories that, that each of you bring. It, you know, it just makes it, it, it shows us what it really is like for our kids and our staff. Thank you so much. And Martin, let's hear about the, the high school kids. Thank you. Uh, good evening, team. Uh, Dr. Kaminsky, board, uh, cabinet. Um, 
at the at the high school, it's uh, similar stories. It's great to see um, such a dedicated staff uh, uh, learn, uh, try new things. Um, uh, today we checked in uh, with English and social studies. Uh, yesterday we checked in with math and CTE, and and from one week of, of distance learning to the next. Uh, they're sharing ideas of, of how to better engage kids. Um, uh, uh, you know, there's, of course, a couple of, of, uh, of concerns with regards to attendance and with regards to how we're going to motivate kids. Uh, but, but overall, um, the, the staff understands uh, uh, the challenges that we're currently facing, these unique challenges. Um, and, and they're up to the challenge to, to try to uh, uh, get our students and each other uh, to stay positive. Um, and, and that's what we keep on focusing on, let's stay positive. Uh, uh, we are where we are, uh, and it's important for us to to um, uh, to, to be that that contact for our kids um, uh, uh, that may have some difficult things going on at home. Uh, once they reach out to their teachers or to their administrators or their counselors, uh, they're going to have a, at least one positive person um, uh, in their life. Um, uh, I mean, it, it's tough. Uh, like Miss Ariana said, um, it's, I, I can't even imagine how our seniors are feeling right now. We we try to send out. Um, weekly videos um, uh, to, to keep them positive, to keep them smiling. Um, uh, but this is a difficult time. This is when we're, we're getting all the information about what colleges are being, they, they've been accepted to. Um, they, uh, you know, the, the college signing is coming up pretty soon and, and scholarships that they're, that they're um, gonna be uh, taking to college and, and uh, uh, you know, prom and all, all of those things that, that stay with you for a long time. Um, um, uh, are not going to be happening as, as expected, and and it's a it's a, a sad sad time for our students, but um, it's also a, a a good opportunity to see how we can motivate our kids in a different way. Um, uh, and and uh, currently we, we have two um, uh, IB juniors, two two juniors that are in the IB program that were that were accepted to the SCS Noonan Scholars, uh, which is a, a national scholarship. Um, it comes with mentoring, scholarships, um, uh, uh, money uh, once they go to college, a free laptop, uh, and, and the SCS Noonan Scholars um, tend to get accepted to uh, some of the most prestigious universities um, in the United States. So we're super excited to see um, uh, what, um, where, where Yerania Busio and Kimberly Rochin uh, decide to, to go next year. Um, but uh, uh, two um, juniors at Azusa High School were accepted into that program. Um, so very excited for, for those Aztecs. Um, also, um, we, uh, we've had uh, over 60 parents uh, join our, our virtual Cafe Aztecas, uh, which is exciting because it's at least double uh, uh, the number of parents that we usually get. Uh, and I think even more exciting than that is that, that uh, we, we, we had over 30 English speaking parents. Uh, and usually uh, the Cafe Aztecas in person uh, tend to be our Spanish speaking parents. So, so we're reaching a new clientele um, uh, of, of people that we serve that we hadn't in the past. And so, so uh, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, of parents are asking for us uh, once we return uh, to continue at least one Cafe Azteca. Um, and, and we're definitely um, going to continue that. Um, so uh, good numbers with our Cafe Aztecas. Um, we, we've also had, uh, let me see, uh, we've also had a good uh, uh, turnout um, when, it, when it came to um, uh, Golden State uh, Scholars Awards. We have uh, over 46. Uh, we have 44 seniors that qualify for the Seal of Biliteracy Award. Um, uh, uh, we and and uh, like I said, just the, the the high number of parents that showed up to our first Cafe Aztec, and we're hoping that we continue. Um, and then and then um, uh, the reach out to our families. Um, our teachers have have either called, emailed, Blackboard connected. Uh, as as of today, over 700 students already. Um, uh, and, and of those 700, uh, we've had uh, administrators, counselors, and, and our awesome classified um, team to follow up with phone calls. Um, and, and as of yesterday, we reached out to um, and made contact with, with uh, 110 uh, of our seniors. Um, and, and, uh, and now we're following up with the juniors. So uh, a lot of outreach, a lot of positivity. Um, we're, we're in this together. Uh, and just want to uh, thank you guys. Uh, a big shout out to um, to uh, Miss Lika Juarez uh, at the at the Cafe Azteca. A lot of uh, kudos to the district for our, their positive outreach and, and all the um, the, um, the positive messages that, that we've been sending out. So thank you everybody, and uh, we're going to continue working. Um, 
shout out to the high school principals, uh, Paula and, and Gabriel. Super awesome uh, working with them together. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martine. I really appreciate hearing about those kids. You know, they're, they're the crowning glory of the system here, the high school kids. Um, we're going to call on a few more people, if you don't mind. Um, and let me let me start with Lika, because she's she, of course, has been helping with the communications and you, you've complimented her and heard Martine compliment her, too. But there's another thing that she's been helping with. And that's donations. We've really been receiving a lot of support from the community. So Lika, can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes. For some reason, hang on. We don't need your PowerPoint right now. I don't see you, I just hear you. Yeah, I don't, my video for some reason is not turning on, but you oh. can you can hear my voice, that's enough for now. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, as Linda has been saying, um, I have been working a lot with our community to organize donations that we need. I mean, obviously there, there's a lot going on that has been unexpected and we are um, just doing a lot of things that we don't normally do, which requires a lot of supplies that we don't normally have access to. Um, and I have been overwhelmed at the um, ease of getting the supplies that we need and at the amount of support that our community has shown. Um, specifically, Chick-fil-A and Azusa, um, the Home Depot and Covina, uh, Raising Cane, Smart and Final, um, Stater Brothers, the city of Azusa, um, it's it's amazing just how much they are rallying around us with um, things like plastic bags to, to pack the food that we give to our students in, um, food to feed our essential um, workers who, I mean, with, with a lot of businesses closed and um, they don't necessarily have the opportunity to leave to, you know, pick up food as easily, um, their, their generosity has been uh, amazing. Um, and I mean, no matter what, even not on short notice, uh, I know that there are a lot of people that we are able to call um, that will, you know, come to our aid um, with whatever it is that we need. Uh, and it's humbling. It's, it's humbling to see the amount of support that, that we have received. So I just want to give a great big thank you to the Azusa community for the, the many ways that they have reached out to support our students uh, during this time. Thank you, Lika. Thank you for, for heading that up for us. Um, Mark, do you want to add a little bit from your perspective? Sure. So I, I did say some of it earlier, but it, it has been an amazing thing to watch um, folks come together to make sure that we get everyone fed and um, you know the folks that typically don't work together. We have you know maintenance. Um, guys, custodian guys, and nutrition service workers working side by side, six feet apart, but side by side um, with our, our, our families to make sure that we move them efficiently through. Um, and it's, it's been truly amazing to see everyone in the positive atmosphere that exists when there's so much um, other things that that people I know have in the back of their mind. So it's it's been amazing and um, really proud of everything that that folks have done to make sure that our community is taken care <coughs> of. Um, last, last week, we served in a single day nearly 60,000 meals, um, which is amazing uh, for us to be able to be able to do that and it wouldn't be possible without the dedication of our of our staff and um, so really really proud of uh, what they what they've accomplished okay now um arturo or jorge if you have anything else i know you've talked already but if you have anything else you want to say go right ahead I'll go ahead and, and start and I, I want to um, talk about a couple different areas um, because um, human resources, I mean, we're, we're about the people and personnel of the, of the district. And so, um, and we have phenomenal people, absolutely. Um, we've seen that, we've seen that true and true. Uh, so one of the aspects of this is when you when you have changes to working conditions, it requires, we're required by, by law to uh, interact with our bargaining units. And so we're, we've been working with our um, labor groups um, and interacting with, with um, our our different groups um, really want to communicate some of the changes that have been occurring um, throughout the throughout the organization. 
Um, we want to really communicate some of those some of those changes that are happening at the state level and legislation, and also at the um, federal level um, as well as the county level. Um, so I want to talk about two um, two particular uh, pieces of legislation that we've uh, really worked on. Um, the first has to do with a recent county order. Uh, the County Office of uh, Department of Public Health issued an order on March 10th uh, requiring uh, real uh, specific um, aspects of, of um, making sure that we are not um, we're not spreading um, coronavirus. And so what that includes is uh, broadening, broadening the face covering the face covering requirements for essential um, businesses um, and making sure that those um, those documents are posted, um, making sure that the uh, workspaces are, are clearly delineated, that they're six feet apart, that um, the spaces where employees or public will be interacting are clearly marked, that they're six feet apart, um, providing face covering for, for employees, um, and then also posting um, a protocol that the Department of Health has required. And then in that protocol listing, the um, steps that the, um, the agency or business is taking. So these have to be um, posted throughout. They have to list the number of entrances or the uh, limiting the number of entrances into the, the area, uh, listing the um, frequency that uh, areas are clean um, and all the steps that we're taking. So um, we've been responding to, to these different orders by, uh, I guess like I said, county, state, federal level, um, as quickly as, as they come out, and it really takes that team effort. Um, as I think somebody said it earlier, where we see uh, a lot of the, the work of um, our employees on the front lines, and I, I also want to recognize some of the employees that are, are working on the behind the scenes to really execute these uh, pieces of, um, of policy that, that come out to, again, protect our, our, our public, protect the community, and of course our employees. I also want to talk about at the federal level, there was a, um, a, a piece of legislation um, entitled Family First Coronavirus Relief Act. And that um, legislation uh, expanded uh, uh, family leave for uh, individuals that um, are affected by uh, COVID-19. So um, it's, um, and, and, and it's very specific and it's legislation that's federal, so we have to um, make sure that people understood that this, this, that some of the stuff that we're going through doesn't necessarily apply, but essentially it expands um, sick leave to uh, individuals who either have been diagnosed or tested positive or have someone in their family. Um, and then they also have a component of this that has to do with uh, child care or caring for a um, family member or um, someone close to them that also has um, tested positive. So um, really it's taken a lot. We, we, we've had to uh, pivot to kind of respond to all of these um, new pieces of legislation um, and then really synthesize them, um, create some sort of form or create some sort of communication around it and then turn around and um, put it up to our, our staff. Um, and I, 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 one of the things I'm proud to, to say is as we put these things together, um, I'm a part of a group that interacts with other assistant superintendents of human resources throughout the LA area. Um, and folks are coming out, how is SZA doing this? Or, or can, I, can you share what you're, what you're sending out to your, to your, um, to your staff? And um, it, it's, I mean, we're, we're collaborating. And of course, I'm asking for what they're doing. Uh, but it's one of those little pieces that we, we're really trying to stay ahead of the curve uh, with, with all these different pieces. Um, and I'll, I'll close by saying that there have been some hiccups. I mean, there's some things that I, as I've reflected um, on every night when I go to bed, I know I could do two or three things better, um, but uh, in times of crisis, I've never been in one that every single decision was 100% uh, correct, but we're constantly trying to reflect and. Um, See how we could do better, um, and and I think that's 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 our core mission. So um, I'll, I'll stop there. And Arturo. Um, no, not really. We just wanted to uh, really highlight the schools today, uh, so you can get a kind of different view of the distance learning uh, block schedule plan and how that's being enacted. 
uh, but we're definitely available if there are any questions. Okay. All righty. Can I ask a question, Jerry? Yeah, sure, definitely. Okay, I, I just wanted to ask a question. Well, thank you everyone for, for uh, your update. But I was wondering, since I haven't heard, you know, they're giving the stimulus uh, checks to, to people and they're giving unemployment. If you're in unemployment, they'll give you $600 more. Is, are they giving anything to education since, you know, we are doing and also like we're hot spots or things that we need to not my pocket, but the districts. I mean, are they are they giving anything for education? You know, just that anyone know knows of. Um, so, I'll, I'll call on Mark to talk a little bit about um, some relief funds that are coming to us. And I also just want to share that um, not just ourselves, but many, many, many districts have been very concerned about the lack of technology, lack of internet connectivity for families. Um, and the uneven way it's distributed to certain districts, really at the expense of making sure that's part of every family's um, experience, the kids have full access to the internet. Um, and in talking to uh, the superintendent of LACO, the county office, Deborah Duardo, they have started um, working, uh, trying to work with other philanthropists, people who are looking to donate to support us. So, I will be on a conference call tomorrow morning to hear more about that. But I want you to know that we've certainly, um, we've shared what our need is. We've been very active in trying to, to express that um, at the county office, but also at the state level too. And even getting messages up to up to the governor's office that there, this is a need that has not been fulfilled yet. Yeah. And then Mark, do you want to add a little bit? Sure, please? so two things. Um, the district did receive a hundred and thirty-two thousand um, dollar for supplies um, that we've already received, and I it is a very small amount, um, so it does not go nearly far enough. Um, but that's it doesn't pay for much. Um, but we've also applied for support from the federal government. So we've turned in an application to FEMA um, and it's very similar to the application that districts do when they're in a wildfire or I guess an earthquake disaster. And so there may be some additional dollars that come from that. Um, we're just in the beginning process of submitting. Um, but as you can imagine, all districts probably in the country are also submitting to FEMA. Because uh, you're also feeding um, students from other, they're not, they don't all necessarily have to be from AUSD. So, you know, I'm sure you're, you're, you're feeding more people or children, correct? Correct. So we're, we're feeding zero to 18 year olds um, that come to the district. Yeah. Um, we, we saw, you know, a couple of weeks ago, large numbers of families in need when other school districts had closed their doors um, for spring break. So when Charter Oak, Covina, Glendora closed their programs, that's one of the reasons why our numbers spiked. Um, but our nutrition service program, um, we honestly don't know how much reimbursement we're going to receive because there's so much conversation about what that dollar amount should be. And so we know what um, it is right now, which is you know a few dollars per meal, um, but there's a lot of conversation about increasing that amount at the federal level, which that's, it's a federal program. Um, so, you also, so you have to keep documentation of who's coming in, how, how many students and, and all that? Correct, yes. Oh yeah. So we, we released an app um, the end of last week and the beginning of this week for families to be able to um, participate in the meal program without having to bring their kids with them, um, which was one of the, the hurdles that families had when they are trying to um, have their kids in, a, in the online class. And then we only have an hour break for them to go get a meal and sometimes that, that wasn't working 
is that on the website or something? Because I had a parent ask me that question and I, I honestly was not sure. No, so it started, we piloted the program at Azusa High um, last week and on Monday, um, we also included Slauson by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And by the end of next week, we'll have Gladstone and uh, Murray also involved in the program. So we're, we're kind of moving west. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the, the great thing is that once they have the meal card, then they just scan the card and then it lets us know how many meals that family is approved for and they don't have to bring the kids with them every single time. But also, so, so my question still is, um, can they view that online or no. how do they know? So they, when they come by, every family is getting a card. Okay. Um, and so they have to come by and right now it's at Azusa High in Slauson. Okay. Um, and then we're hoping by the by next week we'll be able to roll it out to the other two schools. Oh, thank you. Thank but, you very much, Mark. Yeah, that'll yeah. keep track of our meals for us and make sure that we get our proper reimbursements. Yeah. Okay. Good. okay. So oh, thank you. Any other questions? You have a hand raised by Yeah, that's what I saw. That's Shilonin. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was muted. I didn't realize I was muted. Um yeah, so I have a couple questions as well. Um so first just picking back on what Yolanda said. So um was that Mark when you talked about those dollars that we got, was that was that state funding or that was state funding that came in? Correct. That is state funding. Okay. All right, so in that context, I, I, what I'd like to know as a board member, um, whether it's now or at a future board meeting, and especially in the interim, but I, I would like to understand um, all of the work that's happening right now that's shifting to this distance learning, how is that impacting our budget, right? So is it costing us more to do this work? What is that, can, let's quantify that so we understand what that means and, and the impact on the budget um, so that we can make plans for it. I really appreciated from Ali Unified, the report that they had, their board got last week where they talked, they showed how much this this phase right now with distance learning is, is, is their estimate is gonna cost them. They also laid out what they estimated their summer school plan was gonna cost. Um, and so I, I would like us to do that, do that current reporting so we understand what this is costing us as, as a board, but then also thinking, starting to think forward in terms of if we were gonna try to do some kind of summer learning, what would it look like, what, you know, and, and so what kind of budget it would require. So that's that's my first, I guess it's more comment than question, unless do you have those, do you have those numbers available? Like, do you know the, the fiscal impact that this has been on us? So we, we have some early projections, um, but those projections are, are pretty wrong by now, just because um, this has gone on much longer than when we first calculated. So I'll, I'll update them and I'll, I'll share those with you. Um, it, it, it's very similar to the projections that you know, we're getting for effect of the virus um, because things, variables keep changing. Um, so we're, we can give you a, a good estimate, but these are the, the hardest estimates to produce when you know, there's so many uh, things that, that will continue to change. But we'll, we'll give you a, a definitely a good estimate. Right, and I think I mean I, uh, estimates good, but then also just in terms of the, the current expenditures because we've already we're um, we're a month into this now, so I mean that that is actually so yeah those two things that that's great, um, and then my next set of questions are actually for Arturo, um, and this is more around the distance learning piece and student contact. Um, and before I ask my question, I really want to preface this by saying I really appreciate the um, the reports from the principals. I think it really demonstrates how our staff are going above and beyond to try to reach out to our community. So I, I, so I don't, and my comments and questions right now are not related. I, I understand everyone is doing amazing efforts and going beyond, going above and beyond their, um, um, what, what, what would be required of any person. So we really appreciate that. But in terms of just overall aggregate numbers, Arturo, I would really like to understand. So of all of our students, of our over 7,000 students in our school district, how many, how many students have we not made any contact with? So <clears throat> right now, um, the principals meet on a daily basis uh, at the elementary level with their uh, grade levels, uh, at the secondary level uh, with content, and depending on 
the day of the week. It's a di different grade level or a different content. Um, uh, Jennifer Edick Bryant, uh, with the help of uh, some of the other directors, um, Gary in particular, uh, have come up with a um, digital Google Sheet uh, form um, where when principals are meeting uh, with teachers, uh, they are getting that kind of information. Uh, who are, who, who's not kind of, uh, Martin talked a little bit about that. Um, who, who's not connecting? Who haven't you heard from? The teacher tried an email, the teacher tried a phone call, but there's something not there. Um, and so we're capturing uh, all that information on Google Sheets. The school sites then do the first layer of uh, trying to get a team together to make contact with these uh, folks. You heard Ms. Weeby talk about her Title I teacher. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that, that that was a result of this process. Um, and then past that, if the school is not having uh, any kind of um, uh, success, then we, we are also as a district prepared to, to try and help out, to, to try and find out uh, why students not connecting or how we can support to connect them. So, and I appreciate that, and I, I appreciate explaining the process, but what I, I think at the board level, what I'd like to see, especially if you're collecting this data, is is um, summaries of what those numbers look like so that we know. So if we're, of our 7,500 students, we have at least 1,000 that are not checking in on a regular basis, or we have not made, those kind of, those are the kind of numbers that I want to, at the board level, so that we can track, and it's also helpful to know as these move, these numbers change, and hopefully they, they change over time. So that's my first oh. request. Um, the sec I'll put that in our board packet. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, um, and it would be helpful to have some some kind of data to to, to show at our next board meeting as well. Um, my second request is around specifically um, um, the digital divide, and so access to both internet and mm -hmm. devices. And so I know we talked, we we we've gotten data around how many contacts we've had and how many people have reached out requesting devices. And so a similar similarly along with the, the lines of my first question, I would I would really like to understand. So how many of our students have we identified as the total student enrollment that we have? How many do we know has a, have a device in hand, whether for, whether from us or whether themselves? And we've confirmed that. And how many of them have internet access? And that's been confirmed. So, and then I guess, and the other piece would be how many do not, and we have not been able to confirm yet. So I, so that as well, I'd like to know where, where we are with that. Sure. Um, so that is also gonna be multi-pronged. Um, as you know, and you referred to, um, we started off what we would call, uh, in terms of the Chromebooks, we started off with phase one, uh, which was, hey, parents, families, uh, community, if you do not have a Chromebook, uh, please reach out and make a make an appointment to to get one of those. Um, as we were doing that, um, we did have the foresight to also ask uh, every single caller if they had uh, internet connection. Uh, then we bumped into and we moved into phase two, uh, which was a uh, phone line and also an email address. Um, so that has netted us uh, quite a bit of information. So on that route. Uh, we know that there are uh, just over 200 uh, families who self-reported uh, they, they, they do not have internet connection, uh, 207 to be exact. Those 207 um, um, families have now been divided up by school sites. Um, so uh, family X belongs to Murray, family Y belongs to Paramount, family G belongs to Gladstone. Um, and we started uh, our meetings uh, today with uh, site principals. We let them know uh, what students uh, or what families had identified as not having internet connection. Uh, we shared with them their, their specific sheet with all of the information, and they're gonna start an outreach program uh, to these students uh, and these families. But going parallel with that, so the opposite direction now, so this is not families reaching, these are not families reaching out to us, but us reaching out to family uh, go, coincides exactly with the same process that we talked about earlier, uh, where principals are having um, these meetings with grade level teachers and content level teachers and finding out who they're not connecting and then finding out those reasons why they're not connecting. Is it technology? Is it uh, you know, uh, circumstantial things that are happening in their life or whatever? Uh, we had Jenny speak about you know, a student moving to Mexico 
And so, so it's two pronged. One is the families that have already self-identified. And then the other one is through this other process uh, where we have a form and we are, re we are doing the reach out um, is where we're gonna get all that information. But I will also put that in a Friday board packet uh, up to, the, up to the, the latest update that we have and the latest numbers that we have. Great, thank you. And then my last question is just more a process question. So are we, as a district, are we distributing a device, are we ensuring that we have a device per student? Or are we doing a device per household? Per student. Okay, good. All right, thank you. That was, those were all my questions right for now. Okay. Anybody else? I, I have a question. Arturo, there had um, been some, um, I had developed a, um, internet access um, um, page for individuals that can access. Has that been shared with the families? That's actually one of the, um, um, one of the resources uh, that we are using. Uh, so, so thank you for that. The answer is yes. As we, as we are communicating with parents, um, we are we are doing that, and if I'm not mistaken, Lika, can you confirm this? I think we also uh, posted it on our website, but we are going to personally be sharing this with with uh, uh, parents as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? All right. At that point, thank you so much for all that wonderful information. And we'll move on to 9.2, approval new board policy BP 5121.1, grades slash evaluation of student achievement in completion of graduation requirements under emergency conditions. And do I have a motion? I have a motion to approve item 9.2. Okay, motion by board member Rodriguez Pena. And second. I'll second. Okay, seconded by Adrian Greer, uh, board member Greer. And any comments? Yep. I have a question. <clears throat> I have a question regarding um, once they're, they're given their credit or no credit or grade, um, is it gonna be put into ARIES or, or is there a form that's gonna be in their QM? I may be behind time when I'm talking about QM folders, but... Um, are they going to be putting in documents somewhere in, yeah. in their records they receive credit or or a grade? So that's a, a really good question. And yes, ARIES is set up. It has the flexibility that we can um, we will be able to enter a CR for credit or NC for no credit. And so that'll be part of their permanent record when they uh, print out transcripts or send information on to other school districts that will already be included in it. Mm -hmm. And the elementary school, what happens there? Um, the elementary school is going to be comments, which would be part of the report card. So, so, so they will have a hard copy report card, like they would have a regular report card with comments. Um, yeah, we, we are continuing the same process that we've already always been using. Oh. Just an elementary, they won't get a grade; they would get a comment. They get comments, and those comments are also part of the ARI system. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Sure. Um, so how about if a student, say, at the high school level, a senior, decides uh, he or she does not want uh, credit, no credit, and would like a grade, and how, how would they go about that? So the student can request a grade um, as an option if it will help their GPA, and they would ask their teacher for that. Uh, and if you know, we will double check um, and, and put in place a process to make sure that 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 is fed into the area system so that we know that um, that, that happened for the student. Sheila and Ian, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Okay. Yeah, I have a, I have a question, comment. Um, yeah, so I just want to say I appreciate the thoughtfulness of this grading um, policy and the fact that it's coming to us now and not later down the road. I think this is important for us to pass. Um, I will say that at first I was a little hesitant about this uh, throwing in this grading piece. I just, I was concerned about um, whether, you know, how it might 
may complicate things for people, whether it's the students themselves or the teachers. But um, I think having gotten feedback from people on the ground that would actually be directly affected by this, um, I, I, I just want to express that I appreciate that, that, that our district is trying to um, find the best pathway forward for our students. So whether we want to make sure that we hold our students harmless or if they actually um, are making a greater effort and, and improve their grades, that they, that'll be they, they'll have a, that that opportunity to to benefit from that. So I just want to say thank you for for this policy. I appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to passing it. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, let's vote. Okay, vote passes 5-0. And now we will move on to the consent calendar 10.1, no, I mean 10.0, 10.1. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the board to be routine and will be enacted by the board in one motion in a format following the last consent calendar agenda item. There will be no discussion of these items prior to the time of the board staff or the public requests specific items to be discussed. If discussion is requested by a board member, that item will be removed from the consent calendar and will be considered separately. The superintendent and staff recommend approval of all consent calendar agenda items. So do I have a motion? I'd like to pull 10. Oh, you'd like? I'm sorry. You'd I'd like to pull 10.8, uh, please. Okay. So 10.8, approval of amended board policy, uh, uh, administrate, yeah, that one? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay, um, and we'll move that to the consent calendar. So with anything, anybody else? Okay, then we'll go ahead and vote on all but item. Well, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to move, um, Item 10.1, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, 10.0, uh, um, with the exception of 10.8. Thank you. I'll second. Okay, moved by board member Greer, seconded by board member Cruz Gonzalez, and let's vote. We have, oh, everything is moving. That's right. I don't see anything. Do you guys see anything? I still no, don't. it's no. not coming up yet. No, she, she, okay. She's probably moving the agenda consent calendar. Yep. That's what I was thinking. The one. The I question, don't... Kathy's wondering which one did you pull? It was 10.8. 10. 10. 10.8. Yes. <laughs> you see it, Shilani? Excuse me? Oh, yeah, I see it. Sorry, I'm sorry. I got distracted. Okay. All right, passes 5-0. And now we're moving to 11.0 items pulled from the consent calendar, which is 11.1, .1, approval of the amended board policies and administrative re regulations regarding students, amended BP and AR 5116.1, interdistrict open enrollment, amended BP a and AR 5117, interdistrict attendance, amended AR 5125, 
student records, amended BP and AR 5131.2, bullying, amended BP 5131.5, vandalism and graffiti, amended board policy and administrative regulation 5141.21, administrating med medication and monitoring health conditions, amended BP and AR 5141.52, suicide prevention, amended BP and AR 5144.1, suspension and expulsion slash due process. I, I have a question. Shouldn't we address 10.8? Uh, uh, board member Yolanda Peng has pulled it yeah. before we this move was, on. That's what we that. were just, that's, that's what, what we're doing. doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just read it. Are you ready for discussion? Yes. Is there any discussion? Yeah. I, I, I just just had a, a question regarding where it says um, on BP 5117, the, the board may enter into argument with the other school district for a term not to exceed five years. So my, my question was, so who monitors these five years? And, and, and what is what is the process? How, how do they do that? They go and tell the principal or the school that this child's been here five years, so we've got to take them back? Or, or how does this work? Who does this? That would be um, Gary Creel's office who, who does that. I, I'm not sure if Gary's here in the, in the audience today. Gary oh. is here in the audience. Wonderful. Thank you, oh, Gary. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so there was actually, Yolanda, there was a um, ed code change several years ago that we can enter into that five-year agreement. Um, what we do is just a letter goes out every five years, but also once uh, you know it, students are able to leave without that agreement even. And so in the past, you know, maybe 10 years ago, seven years ago or something that we would have this agreement that would just be updated every five years. But when, they, when the uh, education code changed, we didn't have to update it anymore. And that's why it says that we may enter into an agreement. We're not mandated to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's your office um, that monitors this five-year agreement? Yes, we still have five-year agreements with a few districts, but many districts don't do it because it's not necessary to do the five years anymore. It's just more open than that, that it's just, I guess, an understanding. Oh, Okay. But Thank it is you. my office that, that monitors it, yes. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, yep, that was just welcome. my question. Yes, thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to approve or a motion? I, I, I approve a motion. What number is it now? Oh, 11.1. .1. Okay, uh, motion by board member Rodriguez Pena. Second. I second that. Motion. Okay, and seconded by board member Greer. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. No worries. Okay, and now we vote. Yolanda, is there? Gary, yeah, you know, um, sorry, my iPad's frozen. I, I, I keep touching yes, but it, it's not doing anything. It's frozen on my screen. Okay. I don't know what, oh. why, because it was working fine before. Okay, well, I guess we'll do a hand vote. So how does everybody feel? Hands up? Yes. 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 Sorry, I got frozen. Gabriella? Yes. Yes. Okay. All righty. So it passes 5 0. And then we will move on to 12.0 Human Resources, 12.1 Azusa Unified School District and California School Employees Association, Azusa Chapter 299, CSEA Sunshining Proposal. Make a motion to approve 12.1. Is it I second? 
Is this uh, point of point of order? Is this info or it's action? info? Oh, wait. There's no. There's no number. Yeah, it's listed as info. So this this is a multi meeting process. Today, uh, the information is being presented to you for uh, you to uh, be aware of what CSCA is proposing for the sun shining. At our next meeting, we will have a public hearing on that proposal and also a board vote for approving it. Okay. Okay. So, any questions, comments? Oh, okay. Well, then we'll just move right past that. Okay. Now we are going to. Uh, let me get back to the agenda. Um, item 13.0 business and finance 13.1 ratify slash approve change order number one Azusa Unified School District fire alarm upgrades at various sites. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve 13.1. Okay. Um, okay. Motion by board member. Rodriguez Pinion, seconded by board member Arianas. Uh, discussion? Yes, can you guys, um, I think, is it Mark? Um, can you explain um, why we're, we're doing this? Sure, I, I put it up on the screen too. Um, we're, ex we're asking for approval um, due to COVID-19 and other things that we ran into along the way with this project um, that is just gonna make it take a little bit longer. Okay, any other questions? Actually, right. Mark, with, with that in mind, are there, I mean, with everything that's going on, is there anything that is expedited as a result of, of what's going on? Um, any of our uh, modernization movements? For Azusa, no, um, okay. we don't have anything. I know some other projects, you know, if we happen to be already in the queue to, to put down classrooms or something, that this would be a, a good time. But unfortunately, we don't have anything that's through the DSA queue Got it. to be able to do that. OK, any other qu questions or comments? Okay, time to vote. Okay, oh, we're gonna hand vote. All right. Yes. 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 No, no worries about it, Yolanda. Yes. It was my fault. I, I, I was planning on just doing it that way for the rest oh, of the okay. meeting because it's only three things. Yeah. Okay, uh, 13.2, approve change order number yes. two is a unified parking lot upgrade Gladstone Street Elementary School. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion okay. by board member Arianas. Seconded by Yolanda Rodriguez Pena. And any comments? All right, let's. Um, I say yes. Londa says yes. 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 Okay. Five yes. zero passes. Thank you. And 13.3 approval of memorandum of understanding MOU between information and referral referral federation of Los Angeles 211 LA and Azusa Unified School District. I motion to approve. Okay. Second. Motion by Gabrielle, uh, board member Arianas, seconded by board member Greer. And questions, comments? Can you please you explain this? this um, yeah. Are, yeah. Please. Um, and Arturo, would you uh, give a little background on this and what it, all it does for us? Sure. Uh, so this MOU is going to uh, create a partnership with 211 LA, just like we have 411 and 911. Uh, 211 is actually a, a uh, referral system for health and human services across the, the county. Mm -hmm. um, 
this is a result of our participation in the community schools initiative. Um, that initiative has been working uh, really hard to bring a lot of resources uh, to the community schools. Um, I do want to uh, just remind us that the community schools initiative is for Azusa High School. Uh, but what we have been doing is as things come up, uh, we have been meeting with our particular, our potential partners and saying, you know, how, how can we involve, you know, the other high school or other uh, district schools? Uh, so for example, we have the, the well-being center at Glassstone High School. Um, so what this, what this memorandum of understanding basically does, number one, it's to raise awareness of 211 and the services and that they provide. Uh, so that's objective number one. Objective number two, uh, which is more important, is that <clears throat> on a weekly basis, uh, right now that's probably gonna be once a week, uh, there will be a 211 LA staff member uh, here um, to not only um, be referrals for these human and health services, but to actually be a handoff uh, to the services and help people actually connect. So it's not right now when you call, they just they just give you the referral and then it's up to you to try to figure out how to connect with that. This is taking it one step further. So it's not just the referral, but actually walking you through and trying to actually connect you to that resource or that service that you need. Um, so that's, that's what this MOU uh, will allow us uh, to do moving forward. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, uh, let's vote. Yes. 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 Okay, and at that point, it's 846 and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to the principals who came tonight. I appreciate their comments. Yes, definitely. Okay. Oh, I thank you, Cabinet. One, thank you. One story that Kathy, oh, Jerry said, I just want to tell you this one story that Kathy Hendricks was telling me that she got online with her students the first day and they were like staring at her and she's staring at them and she's telling the kids, do you hear me? Do you hear me? And um, the kids are just staring, not saying anything. So her daughter comes from downstairs and says, yes, mom, I hear you all the way from up here. I think they can hear you. <laughs> and she said, oh, you know, because they were just like staring at me. I didn't know they, if they were not hearing me. So <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, that's like I had um, Christine, a friend of mine, uh, come over. And well, we're, we're doing porch drop offs of things exchanges and she said that she had not used google classroom that much and because of this virus and her having to use it she found out all of the neat things it can do and she's going to add that now when she goes back to the classroom that's great another tool great. She said, i didn't even know it had all that stuff yeah that's great that's good and she yeah. sent compliments by the way oh, wonderful that's great okay mm -hmm. thank you so much take care yeah. all right you guys have a good night. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Carolyn, you can turn it on now. How do I get off?